Oh, what's the crack lads? Welcome back to another new video on the channel. This feels so freaking weird because it feels like forever since I recorded a proper video. Um, as you know, the last few weeks, almost a few months now, we've been doing a lot of stuff over on Twitch, which has been transferred over here onto YouTube. So it honestly feels like a while since I've recorded like a proper video in front of you all. So. I decided to wait for this one in particular. Now this one, I've been really anticipating myself personally because the popularity of the franchise we're going to be checking out today has skyrocketed in the last few months. Now, you've all seen the title, you know what this is about, and you're also very much aware of all of the stuff that we've been doing here on the channel. There's a lot of Zelda related content that has happened here on the channel and one of our most successful series and one of the most beloved series here in this community is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, today, today we're going to be checking out something that has been heavily compared to that particular game, Breath of the Wild. And the game I'm talking about, of course, needs no introduction, but here it is, Genshin Impact. Now, this is a anime-style game that's open world. Now, I am aware that this game does have lots of microtransactions and stuff, but it's essentially a free game. And a lot of people have a lot of positive things about this. Some have negative things, but a lot of people have a lot of positive things to say about this game. And a lot of people are actually really enjoying it. Now, I did see the trailer for this game a long time ago, and I was quite captivated by it. And just like the overall beauty of the game. But now, as I delve deep into the worlds of Breath of the Wild, I kind of have an idea of what this kind of game and style is about. So. What I wanted to do in this video is check out every single trailer and cinematic and stuff that has been released for Genshin Impact just to give me an even broader understanding of what this game actually truly has to offer and what kind of mechanics are involved and the characters and the world and the story and that's what we're all going to find out here today in this video. So if you are a huge Genshin Impact fan and this is a video that definitely tickles your fancy, make sure you do leave a like, I greatly appreciate it. And of course, join the community here of amazing, amazing gamers from all over the world that play on multiple different platforms. We're not all about one singular platform here, we're about all things video game related. So be a part of that community by hitting the subscribe button. And if you want to go check out the live stuff where we most potentially will be, playing Genshin Impact for the first time, make sure you go over at twitch.tv slash dbgeek for the live experience with the community over there. Anyway, lads, ladies around the world, that being said, I think it's time we checked out every single trailer for Genshin Impact. Here we go. All right, lads and ladies, as you can see, it's been a while since we've seen a list like this, but my boy Mark's Top Lists has come out on top once again and delivered us a Genshin Impact list with loads of different trailers for us to check out. Now, this could, you know, consist of so many different things. Like, I don't know what I'm going into. I'm going in here completely and utterly blind. I have no idea what to expect, but... I have full faith in Mark in delivering exactly what we need to see today in today's video. Now, we have 53 different trailers to get through. Now, I don't know, depending on how long this recording goes, this may be potentially split up into two parts. I do not know, but these trailers might be short and sweet, so we might actually get this all done in one sitting. Anyway, let's just get things started off, lads. And if you haven't already, make sure you do leave a like on the video. I'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to check the very first trailer, which is Genshin Impact Announcement Trailer. This is when they first revealed it. Nobody knew what this is about. And this was the first official look of what the game potentially was. So let's have a look. All right, here we go. Whoa, did they really start that off with, hey, wake up? Let me go back to the start there, dude. What the hell? This has been already compared to Breath of the Wild, dude. Wow, they really started off like that? Okay. And the protagonist is blonde. Okay. The world looks beautiful, though. Massive, massive Breath of the Wild vibes. And then some. Temple of Time? Alright, here we go. Gameplay right at the beginning, which is pretty cool. 
Whoa, that dragon is cool. 说起来，你们知道吗？风魔龙也是曾经的四风守护之一。从没见过，也从没听过的情况啊。Alright, so this trailer is in Chinese, which is really strange because I'm used to seeing stuff like this in Japanese. And that dragon is badass. Alright, bow and arrow. Okay, different abilities for different characters. Wow. Genshin Impact. I love the logo as well. Look at that, dude! A New World, Spring 2020. Is that when it actually came out first? I can't even remember when it was first released. Very, very interesting first trailer. Like, super, super interesting. Because I couldn't help but compare it to Breath of the Wild. And look, I'm going to do that, alright? Because this has been heavily compared. And since I've completed Breath of the Wild myself and really, really got engrossed into that story and that world, there is going to be a lot of comparisons made to that game. Now, I feel like the devs may have taken a lot of inspiration from it, just from this trailer alone. And even just the beginning, where a character is telling the main protagonist, which I'm assuming is that blonde character, to wake up, you can't help but feel like that was a nod to Breath of the Wild. You know? You just can't. But anyway, let's keep going. That trailer was in Chinese, which is actually very interesting. And I love seeing that, though. It's kind of nice. Um, this one is Come Explore Tevat with Amber. Okay, let's have a look at this. Yeah, I really like the logo. I think it's it's simplistic, but it's also unique. She's very cute. I have no idea what she's saying, but she's cute. I'd love to speak Chinese. There's so many different dialects. Oh, look, okay, so they got the levels on top of their head and they have little health mirrors. So you don't need any special equipment for that. Oh, alright, so just. Whoa, wait, 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 did you just instantly switch character? We got a little bit of a Hyrule Warriors vibe to it with the character selection. Right. This game is already, um. Impressing me. Right, who's this character now? Right, so there seems to be a massive range of different characters that you can choose from. They look like Choo Choo's! Right, so there's obviously different levels for your characters as well. So what's the max level, I wonder? What is that? There's a dragon again. Well, it's, it's not a dragon, but it looks like a dragon, kind of. It's probably something else entirely, but... Alright! Oh, that's a boss fight! Okay! Oh my god, she's tiny compared to it. Flame arrows! Doesn't say the level of the boss. Oh Jesus, that only took off all her health! Uh, 
Oh shit. Zero deaths. So you can have a parody of three. Is that a max? Alright, they have this. They have this one. Is there a finisher at the end? Oh! Come on, come on. Okay, you got it. And they beat it. I wish I knew what you were saying. I'm sure there's probably captions, but it's too late now. <laughs> Look at the world! They're really taking advantage of the hardware. Which I like to see. You couldn't do this on the Switch. Ooh, I like that. That artwork is nice. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! That was cool. Alright, so that was a full-blown like PS4 trailer. It was also in Chinese as well. Um, it gave, a, gave us an idea of what like the boss fights and stuff are like and like the, the gameplay mechanics and what's involved. Um, immediately, I kind of have an idea of what this game is like. It is very similar to Breath of the Wild when it comes to the exploration and the world. Um, the fighting and the actual battle system in it is completely more, it's way more complex than Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild's fighting mechanics are, are very good. I like them. I really enjoy them. But they're not like advanced by any means. Um, this, it seems a little bit more advanced. You have to be a little bit more strategic when it comes to your character selection and your party members. I'm sure each member is different have, and have their own character traits and skills, which you have to utilize in battle, obviously, when it comes to like big boss fights and stuff. Um, so overall, I'm really impressed with this game so far. We have a Japanese version uh, with Amber. Now, apparently the gameplay in this is different. So let's have a look at this. It's essentially the same, but gameplay wise and footage wise, it's different. So let's let's check it out. Now this is a Japanese version. All right, so this is, and this one has subtitles, okay. Oh, she's a knight, okay. Amber. Oh, thank you. Oh, Paymon. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Traveler? Okay. Look at that. Visually, this game is incredibly impressive. I, oh my god, those little blobs, they look like Choo Choo's! Look! And there's ice ones as well! Ah, lads. <laughs> Alright, here comes Amber. Right, look at the world! Yeah, that's definitely a world I want to explore. I wonder how big the map is. That's Lisa. Okay, we're getting more, uh, more of a look into the characters and their names. Jean. And this guy's called Diluc or Diluc. He seems pretty cool. Kaya. Seems things are getting more and more interesting. Razor. Jeez, there's a ton of characters. Barbara. Zhao Ling. Kamisato. Ayaka. Wow. Bye, Amber. Alright, so that was more of an in-depth look into the characters and what characters are actually in the game. There's a lot! <laughs> Unlike Breath of the Wild, <laughs> Breath of the Wild literally has only a few characters and obviously only one playable character, which is obviously really different to this game. There's a lot of different characters with loads of different abilities and stuff. Like, I feel like the combat system is 
not to the same extremity as Hyrule Warriors, but similar when it comes to like the finishers and the character switching and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm definitely interested in, in trying out the 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 actual mechanics of the game. Anyway, we have a Nintendo Switch trailer, which he has in brackets lies. So this is obviously a fake trailer because I don't think this is actually out on the Switch yet. But so let's just check it out. Let's see how well done this is. Switch logo at the start. Oh my god! <laughs> this is, uh... Let me see what channel actually uploaded this. Genshin Impact? Wait, what? Wait, hang on. Genshin Impact themselves uploaded this, so is this an actual Switch trailer? It never came out on the Switch though, did it? Maybe I'm completely wrong. Coming soon. Yeah, I don't think it's out. I'm actually going to check. I'm going to look this up right now on my Switch and see. Just currently loading up the store. Just bear with me. Okay, here we go. Nothing is coming up so far. Usually it would come up once you search it, but... Nothing. Nothing found for Genshin Impact. It's all lies! It's all lies, I tell ya. So, it's not actually out on the Switch yet. Which is... Bummer, because it would be a game that I'd like to play on the Switch, because you can bring it around everywhere. But I'm sure plans are in the works for it to come out. Maybe they're waiting for new hardware before they release it. I mean, it would make sense, considering how nice this game actually looks. Anyway, let's keep the show on the road. We're now on new area announcement of the land amidst monoliths. Now, I know a lot of you are going to think, DB Geek, there's a lot of spoilers in these or whatever, but honestly, without context, this makes no difference to me. So let's keep going. This is in-game footage. I really like, visually, how this game looks. And a lot of the characters in this are adorable as well. Is this another character again? And it looks like you can have a lot of little companions as well. Wow, look at that, dude! These trailers are impressive. They, like, they have... Visually, they're very impressive. Now, I don't know what the game is actually like now, so... Until I play the game, I, I'll know. Also, lads, if you are watching this video and you've made it this far in the video, please leave a like. The more support this video gets, then I'm more inclined to check out the game myself on Twitch. So, just let me know. Only you guys can decide what happens here. So, anyway. Now we have a new opening cutscene. Okay, I do like cutscenes. Let's check this out. Game engine footage. Your voyage. Outlanders. Oh, Your English. Journey ends here. Whoa, who's that? Across the celestial atlas divided by stardust. <laughs> Jeez. When the rulers divine look down upon the earthly realms. Alright, so there's like gods and stuff in this. Whither leads your path, traveler? <laughs> Oh! Wait, what the hell? Oh, they're siblings. That cutscene was so cool. I know a lot of you came here to my channel for like video game stuff, but I am a huge, huge anime fan. I love anime. I genuinely do. There's not, there's actually very little that I don't like, but I like anime. I'm a big fan of it. I've done a lot of anime stuff, con uh, content related stuff, um, on the channel for years. So I think a lot of you, any of you, OG uh, channel subscribers know that I'm a big anime fan. So this is this is already ticking all the boxes. You know, anime, Breath of the Wild style game, open world, you know, it's all there. Anyway, we have Cryo Chapter. Cavalry Captain Kaya? 
I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names, lads, but let's keep it going and see what this is about. This has got 13 million views? Did I see that right? Bloody hell, 13 million views! This guy must be popular, so. I'm Kaya, cavalry captain for the Knights of Favonius. My eye patch. Wanna hear my story, eh? I know a great place more fit for a chat. Oh, he's got wings! Whoa, is that a lion with two legs? Wow! Alright, so this guy got ice magic. Come on, let's get moving. Kea? Kea. Is that his name? Kea? Interesting. The thing that's really impressing me is this game looks beautiful. Not just the overall world, but the character designs, the enemy designs. I mean, it's not half-assed in any way, which is great, because there's a lot of games like this that come out, and it's just half-arsed, and they're just looking for people to kind of buy into the game. This one, they actually put a lot of effort into it, and I can see why there is a lot of positive praise for Genshin Impact. Visually, alone, you know, if even if the gameplay is crap, the game itself is worth getting just to admire. Anyway, we have a new character demo. This is Fischl, Glans Dernacht. This is a Chinese version trailer. Let's check this out. This is, Jesus, all these trailers got a ton of views, bro. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Look at that, dude. I just want to explore. Love me some exploring in games, lads. Right, it's a crow or something, is it? Or is that an actual character now that can change into a bird? Yeah, it is! Oh, she's cool! She got an eye patch or something, or... Fish... Uh, fish... Fiscal? Fiscal. The music. Oh, here comes Amber. Wait, what? Oh, it's like a, a teddy? A bomb? Whoa! Bloody hell! These trailers are well done as well, aren't they? Like, the trailers are fantastic! <laughs> I have to applaud the effort that goes into this. The marketing strategy, everything is... Fantastic with this so far. Anyway, so now we have um, lantern right footage from Genshin Impact. Ming Zhao Convergence. Okay, let's let's have a look at this. I'm being really impressed right now. I'm really feeling it. Ooh, it's nice, isn't it? So is this another character now? That, or what? There's just some sort of spiritual beast or something? Look at all the lanterns. I love those things. Who's this dude? Oh, it blew up! Oh, so it's just a fancy firework. Okay. Well, that was cool. You see what I mean? Like, these trailers, they're not, like... <laughs> these are all very good trailers. Like, you have to at least applaud that, right? 
Okay, see, this is why I do this, lads. This is why I check out new franchises that I've never explored or anything before. This is why I do it like this, because it gives me an idea of what is actually uh, on offer when it comes to these games. Um, and I'm already very impressed. Like, really impressed. <laughs> There, I was actually coming in here expecting this to be somewhat of a Breath of the Wild ripoff, but it is not. It actually isn't. It's not at all. It is. It's essentially its own thing. But there is some inspiration, like clear, clear as day. There has been a lot of inspiration taken from Breath of the Wild, but it's turned into its own thing. And the characters in this, it seems to be there's so many, which is probably going to annoy me more than anything because there's no way I'm going to be able to get to know every single one of these characters, but I don't know what this game has to offer, you know, on a storyline basis. Like, does it have a rich storyline? Is there something there that I can get invested in? Or is it just a world to explore and just characters to unlock and just a game to play for fun? I don't know, but I'll find out. Anyway, we're on our next trailer, which is Pyro Chapter, Chef de Cuisine, as Yang Ling. Chef de Cuisine? What? She a chef? Oh yeah, it's her. So she's got fire magic. My name is Shenling. I'm a chef from Liyue. If oh, she is a chef. To do, we could go foraging for ingredients. I am much better at cooking than navigating. But if you do go out, definitely take me. Do they all have wings? Nice and spicy. It's time to introduce you to my latest masterpiece. I call it the most marvelous multicolored super pancake. Boba, get them. Whoa! I love how it was a trailer about a character that's a chef and cooks, but there was literally no cooking in that. There was one scene with her little companion cooking, but that was it. It was all just fighting. I'm a chef, but I can kick ass and do parkour. <laughs> I loved it though. Don't get me wrong, I actually really like that trailer. Anyway, now we have Genshin Impact State of Play gameplay trailer. This is the PS4 Japanese version. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see. I'm really impressed by this game. Dude, I'm just super impressed by the worlds. The masks of those characters remind me of the Yiga. Here comes Amber. Amber seems to be a very significant character in this. And this person here. Oh, I mean, like, seriously, these trailers are not half hours at all. Wait, who are they? Are they Celestials? Who is this guy? Wait, what? Whoa! Another boss fight? <laughs> right, so the one thing that I've noticed, there's a pattern that I've noticed in a lot of these trailers, that they're really highlighting the gameplay aspect of the game. Which is good, because that's always something that I think, as a gamer, you want to see from a trailer. Like, cinematic trailers are great and all, and character trailers are fine or whatever, and story trailers are always something that we look for as well. But when it comes to a video game, you want to see the video game. And I like how every single trailer that we've watched so far pretty much showed bits of gameplay and what the mechanics of the game actually has to offer. So that to me is actually a massive win. And I'm impressed by it. It's not like I'm seeing this and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of shitty. It's actually very impressive. And I think it's got a lot of like variety to it as well. So 
yeah, let's keep going, man. I'm really enjoying these. Uh, Genshin Impact story teaser will be reunited. Okay. 23 million views? My god! Genshin Impact has actually gained so much popularity. Bloody hell. Oh, this trailer always pops up as an ad on YouTube. Belong in this world. All right, this is in the past, I'm guessing. One day, this journey will reach its end. <sighs> Oh, what? But until the Abyss has engulfed the thrones, my war with destiny will see no end. Your Highness, our plan to recognize the dragon has been impeded. By the Animo Archon? He rises again for the dragon's sake? No, not the Archon. We were well prepared for his interference. Regrettably, Your Highness, the issue is your brother. Outlanders, your journey ends here. Right, so that was in the past. There is her brother. be reunited dear brother but not here not now we will meet at this journey's end once the dust has settled then you will understand okay so finally getting a little bit of um story which is great uh, we have siblings who are royalty, and she has a date with destiny. <laughs> That's literally all I got from that. Um, but it seems that that particular trailer that we watch is actually like a continuation to a story that was already given. So I wonder how the story actually works in this game. Can you just go in and do story missions? Or is there, like, a lot of grinding and stuff? Look, any of you out there that are Genshin Impact experts, this is all, all entirely up to you. I know you're probably a new viewer here or whatever. You need to give me just an idea of what's involved in this game. Now, don't go into spoilers or anything like that. Just tell me what this game, you know, has to offer. Like, in regards to story, gameplay, what's involved, is there a lot of grinding? Do I need to buy into microtransactions to make progress in the game? Probably, but look, let me know. And if you want to see this happen, if you want this to actually be something that you see on the channel, then you need to show the support on the video. Leave a like, share it around, comment down below, all that stuff. Because I genuinely do want to do a stream on this. You know, we can do a long enough stream on it just to really kind of dive straight in. So that's entirely up to you. All of you watching, that's entirely up to you. Anyway, we're on this trailer now. Uh, new character demo. Quickly, I see Resurrection. All right, so a new character again. God, there's loads of new characters in this. Oh, she's little. Cryo, so she can freeze things, okay. I am Chi Chi. I am a zombie and I... What? got what comes next. You're a zombie, are you? build a snowman. Will you help? The wind is frigid. Is she a bit dopey or what? Why does she sound like a grown woman? We are a wife. Life goes on. Orders given. Orders received. I should have stayed indoors today. Quee Quee. I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, very interesting character. Like, it looks like a little girl, but sounds like a grown woman. A really dopey, sleepy, grown woman. That's just kind of gone with it. Or maybe it's a character that's been around for a while and just doesn't age. I don't know. It's very interesting, though. Um, 
I like the variety of characters are in this. Anyway, that was new character demo, Kwee Kwee Icy Resurrection. Now we're on Collected Miscellany. Miscellany? Miscellany? Miscellany. I can't pronounce that word. Uh, Kwee Kwee again, Fortune Preserving Talisman. Okay. Let's have a look at this. This is a four minute long trailer, so let's dive in. Children as special as Chi-Chi are few and far between. As a zombie, time has no effect on her. But she she's a zombie. committing things to memory. For Chi-Chi, perhaps this is a good thing. So she has been around for a while. Her past okay. And be an herb gatherer at Boo Boo Pharmacy. But those who underestimate her just for being a child do so at their peril. I am Chi-Chi. I am a zombie. And I can't remember what happens next. Got what comes next. <laughs> With her mastery over Cryo, Chi Chi is a powerful asset to your team. Despite her size, she has the strength to protect others. With Chi Chi by your side, you will always feel safe. When gathering herbs, she always knows where to find them, because she always carries a notebook with her that has all their locations marked. Oh. Lest she go out and become completely lost. With Chi Chi on your team, the oh minigun look how she runs. Where I bet most of the characters run like that. Making it easier to gather certain resources. Chi Chi's normal attack can combo up to five slashes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina, and releases a two slash flurry, dealing high physical damage. Using Chi Chi's elemental skill, Herald of Frost, deals cryo damage Whoa. to surrounding enemies. Look at the walk Herald on her! Herald of Frost moves with the character, dealing damage along the way, while also healing the current character periodically. Whoa, okay! While Herald of Frost is active, normal and charged attack hits heal the entire party and nearby allies by a set amount based on Chi Chi's attack power. Not only does this increase the team's endurance, it also allows you to dominate the enemy when paired with Hydro. This skill is also oh. useful during exploration. Oh, you, you can freeze, freeze the whole lake! Is a sound strategy for conserving stamina. After unlocking the talent Life Prolonging Methods, when a character under the influence of Adeptus Art Herald of Frost triggers an elemental reaction, incoming healing is increased. Sacred Name, Fortune Preserver. When Chi Chi releases the Adeptal Power sealed inside herself, she marks nearby enemies with a Fortune Preserving Talisman and deals cryo damage to them. When enemies marked with Fortune Preserving Talismans take damage, the character dealing the damage is healed. Oh, an wow, to use that's a super useful. Of fortune, the whole team can be protected while dishing out damage. Nice. After unlocking the talent A Glimpse into Arcanum, normal and charged attack hits have a chance to tag enemies with a fortune-preserving talisman once per set time period. Chi-Chi has the oh, ability to constantly heal, an excellent safeguard that helps keep your team alive. The more difficult the battle, the more apparent Chi Chi's assistance becomes. When entering battle, first use Herald of Frost to allow your team to deal constant cryo damage and easily trigger elemental reactions for greater damage. The effects of Herald of Frost will keep your team fighting fit until the right moment comes to unleash an elemental burst, allowing your team to safely unleash all the firepower they've got. Wow. That is awesome. As a zombie, Chi Chi has escaped the grip of both time and death. How Chi Chi entered this state of existence, I do not know. Oh, but they're I not going to tell us. It was of her own volition. Oh, that's kind of sad. Are the principles toying with her? Or is fate seeking to torture her? Is an ordinary life of simple pleasures really a thing so fragile? Very interesting character now after watching that. So that was more so a character trailer. An in-depth look of to into Kui Kui's character. Really, really cool. That was actually really, really cool. And she seems like the super useful character to have in your party. Like having those healing abilities on your side is like next level, like crucial when it comes to like really big fights. 
That was awesome. I really enjoyed that trailer. <laughs> and I like Kiki more now as a character. Anyway, we're now on new character demo. This is Mona. Fate and Destiny. Okay. All right. Give us give us these character demos. I do like them. I do like them. All right, let's have a look. Mona. I am astrologist Mona Magic. Oh my god. Meaning the great astrologist. I'm already Mona. impressed. The equipment repair bill is due, and so is the final payment for that celestial globe I ordered. Astrologers must rid themselves of material desires. Look Only at the by world. Oneself of clutter can one see the true world around. I just want to play the game to explore. Alright, so her element is Hydro. Mix her with Quiqui and you got yourself a pretty impressive team, right? Very impressive. Alright, so that was Mona. We're going to get a more in-depth look into Mona now. Um, as we get to Mona Stellaris Phantasm. Okay, let's have a look at this then. This is a good five minutes, so we're actually going to get a good in-depth look to the character now. Just like Kiki. Kiki or Kiki? The stars Don't illuminate <laughs> all mortal destinies. Though few have eyes to perceive their meaning. But Mona... An astrologist newly arrived in Mondstadt is able to read the fates of others through stars reflected in the water. But while no phenomenon is hidden from the astrologist Mona, she struggles often with the minutia of daily life. It is a most common predicament. The more you seek truth, the more simple joys elude you. This was ordained by fate. Long had I foreseen it. Mona has skill that matches her reputation. As a hydro-aligned catalyst user, she masters the battlefield with ease, controlling the situation and creating openings for her teammates to attack. As a student of all things in and under the night sky, Mona also has a strong grasp of weapon construction. Weapon in construction? Truth, she finds Excuse that me? most weapons are wastefully made. When she crafts weapon ascension materials, she has a chance to recover a portion of the materials. Alright, so this is the first time we're seeing the crafting screen. Mona's normal attack performs up to four strikes that deal hydro damage. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina and deals area of effect hydro damage after a short casting time. Mona creates a Phantom of Fate from Coalesce Water. This phantom taunts nearby enemies and deals continuous hydro damage to them. The phantom explodes when its duration expires, dealing area of effect hydro damage to enemies. Holding the elemental skill button causes Mona to ride a flow of water backwards and summon her phantom. This skill has many applications. The phantom can be used to taunt enemies, making them wet and priming them for attacks from Mona's allies. Ah! It can also help her out of a pinch. When that Mona is very sprints, useful. She cloaks herself in flowing water. Wow! That's awesome. To move rapidly. Ending this skill causes Mona to emerge, getting nearby enemies wet. Illusory ah. Torrent also allows Mona to travel swiftly over water. With no stamina required. Once her first passive talent is unlocked, Mona can create a phantom automatically if she maintains this skill for Dude, a this game is so pretty. with an enemy nearby. Fate is upon you! Mona summons sparkling waves and creates a reflection of the starry sky applying the wet and illusory bubble statuses onto all enemies in the area. When affected by illusory bubble, weaker enemies will be imprisoned and unable to move. Wow, look at that! Attacking imprisoned enemies removes that status from them. And but it keeps them, them imprisoned though. Hydro damage. If, they, if you just leave them there. When the status is cleared, the enemy comes under an omen. Enemies affected by an omen take more damage. Oh, wow! Okay! 
On the ever-changing battlefield, Mona's capacity for control cannot be overlooked. This astrologist aids her team at critical moments, controlling the field and maximizing her teammates' damage. As the battle begins, she first summons a phantom. It taunts enemies and lets her switch out, using the opening created to cooperate with her teammates and deal massive damage to enemies. She uses these combined techniques to control enemies, allowing the party to damage them safely. Wow. Once I'm really loving her the battle system in this. The whole mechanics of the fighting is awesome. Trigger damage bonus effects. This way, she can defeat the weakened enemies before her all in good time. That's really Mona's impressive. Hydromancy is indeed unique. No one can deny her intelligence and talent. Within Mondstadt, there are few who possess the ability and a desire to seek truth equal to hers. Hmm. But beware, O oh young seeker. You must sacrifice your all to unravel the world's secrets. Can the astrologist Mona truly bear such a burden? Dude, they go into some serious levels of detail when it comes to these character trailers. That was amazing. I'm genuinely already invested in these characters. And I haven't even played the game yet. Anyway, we're on another story teaser. The Boy and the Whirlwind. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look. In old Mondstadt transpired the story to be told. Mondstadt, is that the name of the world? I met a boy not that old. The liar he played. And for a song he sought. But storm walls blocked blue sky. He was sincerely distraught. I do so wish to see the birds in flight, said he, his strong eyes filling with light. But his voice was lost in the howling wind's churn. For the whirlwind takes and gives not in return. The true sky and songs that cageless soar. Were they not wishes worth fighting for? So the boy turned, extending his hand. Let us cast down the tyrant and his walls from this land. The young boy raised in the flag of revolt, and I threw myself into freedom's tumult. Victorious were we who fought to be free. Gods fell, winds whipped, nations shook violently. In the smoke, a despot met his doom. And we watched as his great tower fell none Whoa. too soon. Mondstadt began anew. The story passed down. And since then never has another worn its crown. Interesting. I like that. It gives more in-depth to the story. Um, and characters that may potentially make their appearance into the game. I said it once. I said it twice. And I'll say it again. They are not half-assing anything with these trailers. They're all really well done. It seems like there's a lot of time and investment gone into it. Um, which is great. Uh, we have another story teaser, actually. So let's check it out. This is Gnostic Chorus. English voiceover. Let's have a watch of this. I like these. Once, there was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. From that kingdom came a crowned heir. Tasked with seeking out the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. The first crowned heir began her journey of seeking the Pearl. But she was deceived, and the memory of her noble origins faded. She now believed that she was the Queen of the Kingdom of Darkness. What? But take heart. A second crowned heir has already taken up the path where the first had stumbled. This is the story of your journey. Of your tale to be told. Oh. I mean, that'll be a good start to the whole thing, wouldn't it? Oh, that was really cool. Alright, so we have a, the, the Japanese voiceover one. Will we listen to the Japanese voiceover one? Fuck it, we will. Why not? Might as well. Same trailer, Japanese though. 
創世の真珠を探すよう命じたこうしてかの者は真珠を探す旅に出たしかし彼女は騙され自身の好奇さを忘れてしまうそして自らを暗黒の国の王女だと思い込むようになったでも心配はいらないなぜなら王位継承者第2位の者が旅に出たからだこれは君の長い旅の気候であり君たちの真珠の歌である Oh, it's just something so like, I don't know, more powerful than the Japanese. It's just probably just a weeb in me, to be fair. Anyway, now we're on version 1.0. Version 1.0 gameplay trailer. So, like, this is the. Like. I don't know. Let's, let's watch this. Version 1.0 gameplay trailer. Really loving these trailers right now. Look at that. I just want to, like, run around. That's all I want to do, just run around. Outlander, as you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. Defeating that monster might remove this strange wind current seal thingy around the Statue of the Seven. All right, we're getting a little shot of our characters here. That sits around doing nothing all day? Vinti the Bard. He was once such a gentle child, now so full of rage and suffering. There's that thing again. It's like a griffin and a dragon combined, I isn't it? Stand for such impertinence. To ashes! I, Fischl, Princess and Dufa Ertelung. Ooh. Is there like dungeons and stuff? The story with a performance. Will you believe me? Time for takeoff! Sacred name, fortune preserver. One step closer. Maybe soon I shall finally uncover the truths of this world. I swear by my sword, the sword comes shadow. Blaze into light! Ooh! This Wow. Very, very cool trailer. Like I said, lads, these trailers, they're unreal. I really love them. I'm like really, really enjoying them. Right. Let's go and keep going. Um, so the last trailer we left on was version 1.0. Now we're on uh, Tevat chapter storyline preview. Travail? 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 I don't know. Look, lads, I'm going to say this now, right? If you have anything that you need to say, that anything, any piece of information that you want to send my my way before diving into this game, your best bet to do this, now this is a little bit of a shameless plug, but honestly, this is the best way to actually contact me, is on Twitter. So make sure you do follow me on Twitter, link in the description below. Um, if you have anything to say to me about the game, any like advice or anything going into it, that is the place to do it. Leave a follow over there and then hit me up on DMs and stuff like that. And I will definitely read them. Now, I may not respond to everyone, but I'll definitely check them out. Right, so we're on Teva Chapter Storyline Preview. Tra travail. 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 I don't know how to pronounce any of these. So let's just, let's just dive in. We had no time to say just dive goodbye. in. So let's not call it that. The war has already begun. It is just a continuation of past battles. The gods goad us on with the promise of their seven treasures. Rewards for the worthy, the doorway to divinity. Seven treasures. Yet buried in the depths of this world lies smoldering remains, a warning to those that dare trespass. There's the siblings. The throne in the sky is not reserved for you. But mortal irrigation never stops. None will escape the flames. See for yourself. The dragon who defended Mondstadt for a millennium prologue, outlander who caught the wind. Perturbation. Mondstadt. What does freedom really mean when wow. demanded of you by a Wow! This is an amazing trailer! Visually, this is super impressive. 
the god of contracts. Act one, farewell, archaic lord. His people watched on in horror. In the end, he will sign the contract to end all contracts. She's cool. In the secluded land of the immortal Act two. Shogun, omnipresence the over mortals. Eternal. In Azuma. But what do mortals see of the eternity chased after by their god? The god of wisdom's enemy. Act is wisdom three. Itself. Truth amongst the, the pages of Piranha. Knowledge is a mirage Sumuru. in the desert of ignorance. In the city of scholars, there is a push for folly. Yet the god of wisdom makes no argument against it. Is there a deserty area the in this of game? Lives for the spectacle Act of four, the courtroom, masquerade seeking of the guilty. To judge all other gods. Fontaine. But even she knows not to make an enemy of the divine. Who are they? The rules of war are woven in the womb. Act five. The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. When the god of war shares this secret with the traveler, it is because she has her reasons. What? She is a god with no love left Act for her six. people. Act 6! Everwinter, without mercy. Wait! Her. What? Her followers hope only to be on her side when the day of her rebellion against the divine comes at last. In the perpetual meantime of a sheltered eternity, most are content to live and not to dream. But in the hidden corners where the god's gaze does not fall, there are those who dream of dreaming. Some say a few are chosen and the rest are dregs. But I say we humans have our humanity. We will defy this world with a power from beyond. So that's the guy that's narrating this. I'm guessing. Now, you who has set foot in this world. Your journey has reached its end, but one final doorway remains. Step forth if you have understood the meaning of your journey. Defeat me. Command me to step aside. Show me that you are worthier than I to rescue her. Then, the threads of all fate will be yours to reweave. My memory has all but faded completely. But I will always remember how much she too loved these flowers. Okay. Don't really know what to say about it because I... I think it's just one of those things that you need to like know the game to understand what I, what I just watched. But like it just seems to break things like the story down into like different acts or chapters or whatever. Um, very, very interesting though. Um, it's the Tevat chapter storyline preview. That's what that was. Okay. Okay. There's going to be a lot of moments where I'm like, whoa, I wish I knew more about that. But look, I've never played the game before. So this is kind of the stuff that is just going to excite me more than anything. Um, now we're on collected miscellany dialogue. Dawn. Okay. Dialogue. Dialac? Dialogue? Dialogue? Dawn Winery's owner. Diluc dominates Diluc. alcohol That's it. industry. <laughs> alcohol? Wealth and information are at his fingertips. This is a pyro guy. Modest and refined, yet if the hair didn't act, give it away already. Mondstadt faces a crisis. What caused him to choose this path? Hmm, how very curious. There must be those who dare to pierce the darkness with their light. As one who wields pyro, he's a, a pretty cool man. dude, this lad. Diluc has perfected the art of violence. Diluc perfected the perfected the, the art of violence. I like him already. <laughs> with his powerful skills, Diluc causes massive damage with ease, and crushes all his foes with fearsome, ruthless strikes. So he'd be more of an aggressive character rather Born than strategic. Diluc is well versed in all things swords. With his guidance, no metal ore is wasted in the <laughs> love of the blacksmith's not even looking when where he's hammering. Claymores, Diluc recovers a set percentage of the ores used, aiding greatly in your adventure. 
Diluc's okay. normal attack performs up to four consecutive strikes, with the fourth strike four launching Four very, enemies. very powerful strikes. Holding the attack button constantly consumes Diluc's stamina to launch swift consecutive attacks, dealing oh. increased physical damage to nearby enemies, and unleashing the stamina an extra powerful there? attack at the end that launches enemies. Use this wise. He's a great character, or not character, crowd control foes. character. Unlocking the talent Relentless decreases Diluc's charged attack stamina consumption and, and increases the amount of swings. Duration. Ah! Uses fierce attacks to defeat those before you. Using the elemental skill Searing Onslaught, Diluc strikes with his Claymore, dealing pyro damage. This can be done three Man, times they are choo choos. I don't care what anyone says. Time to connect each strike. But pay attention. Obviously, a lot more powerful than two choos. The next strike is not activated in a short period of time. Okay. Using Searing Onslaught in concert with normal attacks allows you to deal constant damage to enemies while remaining evasive and mobile. Additionally, since this skill deals pyro damage, Diluc can form combinations with other characters using elemental reactions to deal greater damage. Right. Whoa. Wait, what? What was that? Luke knocks nearby enemies back before gathering the flames Whoa. into his blade and launching a phoenix. He can launch Dealing a phoenix out of his sword. To that is insane. Diluc's normal and charged attacks will also deal pyro damage for a period of time. Dawn has a very large hitbox, allowing it to not only strike airborne foes, but also forcibly reposition enemies to an extent, making it very strong against groups. Whoa. The pyro damage conversion that Dawn provides. I think I'm gonna like you as the this character. <laughs> I think you're gonna be one of me, one of my favorites. The blessing of Phoenix talent increases the duration of Dawn's pyro damage conversion and gives Diluc a pyro damage bonus. Whoa! Diluc is, without question, a well honed warrior who efficiently deals with any task. Now, please witness him in action. Diluc. He begins suppressing the target with normal attacks, combining it with his elemental skill to deal great pyro damage to the enemy. He weaves between these two attack modes to suppress the foe more quickly, while building up elemental energy. He uses his elemental burst once his energy is full, followed by attacks enhanced by Blessing of Phoenix. Defeating wow. Flawless. Nice! D Luke's explosive, <laughs> ruthless fighting D Luke. and his aloof manner are all admirable traits. But if the disaster from five centuries ago were to happen again, if he were to face the same evil that I once did, would he still hold fast to his resolve? This D Luke makes me most curious indeed. What a badass character. Yeah, I think Diluc is definitely going to be one of those characters that I'm going to, like, have so much fun using. Because they do like powerful, aggressive characters in games like this. Um, I think they're really, really important, especially if you want to deal heavy amounts of damage. And also crowd control when it gets a little crowded with enemies and stuff. Great character to use. And to utilize, especially if you have the right kind of team. Like, I like the way you can mix things up with your party. Like, to your playstyle, obviously. This is really, really cool. Anyway, we're now on character teaser, Venti, The Four Winds. Right, we still have plenty more trailers to check out, lads, so let's just keep this train going. One millennium ago, when the aristocracy fell at last from grace. It's the Bard. The defender of the South banished tyranny from the city gates, while the West spread her wings and took her rightful place. The Wanderer in the North settled with the Wolven race. As the four winds blew, to all corners they flew, but much was to be done to build Mondstadt anew. The animal god called on them, each one in turn. First their leader, the Westwind, though he found himself spurned. The Lionfang Knight was less than impressed. I've no time to join you in sing, dance, and jest, for you see to these three while I handle the rest. Next did he track down that leader of wolves. Asked him to tame his most unbridled of souls. The wolf leader growled he would not be contained. Do not lecture me, bard, you who are the least restrained. Oh. 
So the animal god implored the friend he'd known first to blow the ice from the face of the earth that verdance and freedom could once more be birthed. Okay. But the dragon had known his bard god friend. Wait, so that is a dragon. He would not share the work, but dictate it through song. So it is a dragon confirmed. Do some real work, Barbados. Barbados. Okay. Interesting. So what we got from that is that there's actually four different areas um, in Mon Monstead. Monstead. Now I feel like I pronounced that completely wrong. But there is four like different capitals or whatever. Um, okay. Okay. It's giving me a little bit of like world building. Which is nice. It gives me an idea of like what the world is and what it consists of. Like I've seen a lot of what the world looks like. But I don't know what it actually consists of. Like how many different like towns and cities and and places to explore and stuff. That stuff has all been like very vague at the moment. Anyway, now we're on character demo, Venti a Bard's Business. I like the way that there's a massive, massive variety when it comes to the a characters. A mysterious bard named Venti has recently appeared in the world. But it also means there's like for the city of freedom and Rome. a lot of different context the to the story. Mondstadt, the crown of the north. Mondstadt. Nation with no ruler. Crown of the North. This once bitter cold land in the north of Tivat is now fertile. A blessing left by the god of Animo, they say. A thousand years have passed since the god of Animo left this land. Okay. But to me, it has only been half that time. Come on, traveler, let's go. The world is full of lost ballads just waiting to be rediscovered. As an archer with the power of Animo, Venti can battle with ease in almost any environment. His versatile attack style and his ability to... Alright, this is what I wanted to see, the bard in action. ...allow for a high amount of mobility in battle. His unique right. elemental burst can pull together nearby enemies, making him a strategic character who can both deal damage and control the battle. Whoa! How long does that go on for? Jesus! When Venti is in your party, gliding consumes less stamina for all characters. Why? Needless to say, this skill will come in handy on your adventures. Take Venti along <laughs> when exploring the beautiful right. open world. So everybody has wings. Normal Nobody has a paraglider. To six consecutive shots. The first and fourth shots can fire an extra arrow. While the sixth shot deals greater damage. It's cool, but it doesn't look like it's Hold doing a whole lot. Hold the attack button to use a more powerful oh. aim shot. All right. When fully charged, an animo infused arrow is fired and deals even more oh. damage to the enemy. Oh! Blue his face off. On the wind on which hymns and songs fly to lift your enemies up into the sky. When you use the elemental skill Skyward Sonnet. Ah, well. Venti summons okay, a wind maybe that's why the salmon the meter should dealing area of effect increase. animo damage. This is a like windy kind of character and fall slowly to the ground. Hold Skyward Sonnet to summon an even larger wind domain around Venti. That is awesome. Dealing greater area of effect damage and launching enemies into the air. Venti also uses this powerful wind to fly high into the air. A deft use of this skill. So he's not only basically Revali. But also dodge attacks and move around the environment. If the opportunity presents itself, you can also use a plunging attack from above. Wind domains can even be utilized to help you get around. Ah, <laughs> Revali scale! Not as good. <laughs> After unlocking the talent Embrace of Winds, holding Skyward Sonnet will also create a temporary upcurrent as you fly into the air. By firing an arrow infused with coalesced winds, Venti creates a fierce storm. Right, sucks which in surrounding enemies. Oh, whoa. And deals animo damage. Contact with hydro, pyro, cryo, or electro elements causes the storm to absorb that element. What? And deal okay, that damage. is fucking cool. The storm can only absorb one element each time. Okay. After unlocking the talent Storm Eye, Venti's energy will be replenished at the end of Wind's Grand Ode. If an element oh my God. is absorbed, the energy of party members of that element will also be replenished. Right. Even though Venti is more than capable of handling different obstacles in battle, 
Strategic party selection and teamwork can help you maximize Venti's abilities. First, use Divine Archery to attack enemies from afar and whittle away at their health. Use Skyward Sonnet to launch dangerous enemies into the air. Gather up energy to prepare for the final attack. When your energy is full, unleash your elemental burst. Okay. Wind's grand Ode sucks the enemies in and deals animo damage. But not big Use enemies. another element on enemies in the storm to generate a swirl reaction. Whoa. Then use another compatible element to cause an elemental reaction. What is with that little bunny Causing thing? Another elemental reaction <laughs> brings the battle. Little bunny to amber, that's adorable. Wow. Okay, this character actually As we all know, impressed me a lot. Poetry and language flow like the wind. I love that the narrator sounds Venti like Valley. captures this spirit in his ballads. Flora and fauna he sings of seem to have a life of their own and transport us to the moon and the stars. This self-proclaimed best bard of the mortal world gets his strength, his unwithering inspiration from the wind. But what Venti seeks in life bard of the is not eternal fame for his ballads. Rather, he'd be happy with a cup of wine and a lyre to sing the marvelous stories of the world. Cup of wine? How old is yes, he? Yes, that would make Venti the Bard very content indeed. Venti the Bard just seems content anyway. <laughs> He's like a super like chilled out, going with the flow kind of character, isn't he? It just doesn't seem like he's aggressive or angry by any means. He's just one of those dudes that's always happy and just content with life. And I like that. Very, very cool stuff. Really enjoyed that character trailer. Um, so let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. So Venti, I think, has been probably most likely, since I'm doing it, compared to Rivali. I mean, he's an archer. He's got wind abilities. He can basically do Rivali's Gale, but not to the, the same extent. Very cool. Very cool. And I like how each character has something completely unique to bring to the table. Anyway, we have a new character demo. This is Klee Dada Da. Right, let's have a look. The strongest fighter in Mondstadt? Is this self-proclaimed? What? Play time with Klee? Oh, She's I little! Of the storm watch. Which means you warn Klee the second you see Jean coming. Let's go! She's adorable! Klee, fleeing sunlight. Oh my god. She is absolutely adorable. Oh my god, look at her run! Stop it! This is too much! <laughs> oh, Clean. oh, hang on. You know the consequences. <laughs> uh oh, what's happening? Uh oh, what is this? She being detained? It's detention? What is this? Freedom! Oh my god, that's the way she runs. That is so bloody cute. But she seems vicious as well. <laughs> Next time, let's go fish blasting together. Oh, she's a little bundle of violence and I love it. Wow. That is <laughs> probably one of my favorite trailers that I watch right now because it's just this adorable character just brings nothing but pain. Like that's so cool. Anyway, very, very cool. I like Klee. Klee is a very cool character. We got more Klee now. Collected uh Miscellany. So this is another character trailer for Klee. So we're gonna get a more in-depth look. To her character, which is going to be awesome. I, I'm looking forward to this now. To see what she can actually do. This is going to be good. There we go. There are many remarkable people in Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius. Among them is a small knight who raised Stormbearer Mountains flat. And whose name has recently become commonplace. <laughs> I love her role. Look at that! She just brings when danger! <laughs> Klee, there are rumors aplenty. <laughs> 
Interestingly, those telling these rumors do so with a smirk and a shake of their heads. Joking that even Mondstadt's fish have learned to swim oh away. Oh my god, the poor fish! Can I come play with you today? Please? No, no you I cannot. Go on an adventure. Well known she as is the terrifying. Klee is able to deal continuous pyro damage. Oh my god. With her I love this character so much. And a pack and pockets full of bombs. But watch out, as anything near her may be turned to ash in a fiery explosion. <laughs> This is so good. Adventures and is adept at expeditions and gathering. Not only does she know the locations of Mondstadt's unique flora, she may also know where to find a treasure or two. When okay. Klee is on your team, the location of items unique to Mondstadt will appear on your minimap. Oh. When it comes to anything explosive, Klee simply can't control her enthusiasm. Yeah. Klee's normal attack performs up to three consecutive explosive attacks that deal AoE pyro damage. Holding the attack button consumes a certain amount of stamina, and after a short casting time, blasts enemies, dealing AoE pyro damage. When Klee is up high, her charged attack can reach enemies even farther away. Also, Klee's normal and charged attacks are especially effective against Geo targets making them ideal against enemies with Geo Shields and for oh. quickly mining ore. After unlocking the talent's sparkling burst, when Klee's charged attack lands a critical hit, some energy will be restored for all party members. Use Klee's elemental skill to toss Jumpy Dumpty. Jumpy Dumpty will bounce Jumpy three times, Dumpty. each bounce causing an explosion that deals AoE pyro damage. On the that is bounce, brilliant. Jumpy Dumpty will burst into mines. These explode upon contact with enemies or after a short time, dealing AoE pyro damage. Jumpy Dumpty will automatically recharge over time to up to two charges. It is effective in dealing with groups of enemies. After Jumpy Dumpty explodes, switch characters and pull enemies together to take advantage of the mines and deal a lot of damage oh, to enemies. Whoa! After unlocking the talent Pounding Surprise, when Jumpy Dumpty and normal attacks deal damage, Klee has a chance to obtain an explosive spark. When Klee has an explosive spark, instead of consuming stamina, her next charged attack will expend the spark instead and deal increased damage. Wow. Klee's blazing delight. Sparks and splash continuously what attack is that thing? That's another boss fight of some sort, is it? Skill, dealing AoE pyro damage. Sparks and splash has high damage and attack rate, empowering Klee to deal immense damage while on the battlefield. Klee is able to continuously dish out strong pyro attacks, earning her a role as the firepower of your party. Next, let's look at a battle to that. experience Klee's incredible destructive capability. In battle, have we not seen that already? Klee can use her elemental skill and normal attacks to repeatedly activate the effect of the talent Pounding Surprise and use charged attacks to suppress enemies. When her energy is full, unleash an elemental burst to further increase her ability to deal damage. After this, Ooh. Klee can have fun causing explosions, spreading flames in every direction, and burning enemies to a crisp. Holy crap! When the people of Mondstadt talk about their home, they proudly call it the City of Wind, Dandelions, and Freedom. Perhaps it was Mondstadt's atmosphere of freedom that led the famous adventurer Alice to entrust her daughter Klee to the care of the Knights of Favonius. With this freedom, Klee has had a happy and unrestrained childhood. But all baby birds must leave the nest someday. Unrestrained. <laughs> Say that again. Knight will remain just as happy-go-lucky when that day comes, and keep smiling all the way. Klee. <laughs> I wonder if Klee stands for killer lolly and extremely explosive. It would make sense. I'm just saying. So now we're on character tales. Fleeing sunlight in the night. I like these character tales things. These are really cool. Love Clee. Hey, oh, it's Clee again! I'll let you in on a little secret. Did you know there are monsters that come out at night in Mondstadt? Shh, be quiet. 
I'll tell you everything, but you can't tell nobody. Okay. After everyone is tucked up cozy in their beds for the night, monsters pretending to be the Knights of Favonius come That's out to mother. kill people. I can even hear their footsteps from inside the confinement room. <laughs> and so... This is brilliant. Boom, I blasted the door open to defend Monster from the monsters. But the Master Gene who grabbed me and dragged me away was really scary. Scary like the real Master Gene, not like some monsters. So strange. Anywho, you mustn't tell a soul. Kai is the one who told me the secret about the monsters. He didn't tell nobody else but me. Oh, Kaya. Coaxing Klee into escaping from solitary confinement, it seems. <laughs> Perhaps we've made the child's studies a little too imaginative lately. Aw. Cute. Very, very cute. Love Klee. I love her. I think she's a fantastic character. Um, there's one thing I can say is that I think it's going to be a little daunting at first playing this game. Um, because there's so much. And I think I'm just being a little, like, feeling a little bit daunted by it because of all the trailers that we're watching. Now, obviously this has been stuff that has been gradually introduced to the franchise. So it's not daunting to anybody that has already seen everything. But for me, that has never played this game before, has never experienced it. And seeing all of this, it's like, whoa, there's so much to take in. But you have to start somewhere, right? And I'm sure they're not going to throw, like, so much at me at once. But then again, I could be completely wrong. So, let's keep moving. Uh, we're on Gene now. Gui guiding Breeze. Okay. And this is a character miscellany, so this is a long one as well. So, let's keep going. Let's check it out. Let's see what this has to offer and see what this character is about. Isn't this Klee's mother? When Grandmaster Varka of Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius left on an expedition, his role passed to Jean, the eldest daughter of House Gunhilder. The young House acting Gunhilder. Grandmaster had become a skilled swordsman through hard work. She's a Grandmaster. harder still for the sake of the Knights. Self-sacrifice, after all, is the Dandelion Knight's path. As the wind continues to blow, so too shall I continue to fight. Jean has excellent crowd control and support abilities, and can act in concert with others to suppress the enemy. Jean's elemental burst can instantly restore her health, and benefit her really? allies as well, making her the pillar of any team. Even when cooking, Jean is always concerned with helping others, and can accidentally make extra helpings. When Jean cooks a restorative dish perfectly, she has a chance to create two of them. Ah! Ooh, the cooking! That's the first time we're seeing the cooking properly. Jean can perform up to five consecutive normal attacks, dealing physical damage to enemies. Okay. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina, and unleashes a wind-infused thrust that deals high physical damage and launches enemies. Launched enemies will fall slowly for a short time, allowing Jean to control the flow of battle and give her teammates a chance to perform follow-up attacks more safely. Unlocking the talent Wind Companion gives Jean's normal attacks a chance to heal all party members on hit. This healing scales what? with Jean's attack power. Tapping her elemental skill Gale Blade causes Jean to gather formless wind on her sword and unleash a small storm, launching enemies in the direction wow. Jean is aiming, dealing animo damage. Holding Gale Blade constantly consumes Jean's stamina, pulling nearby enemies in front of her. What? That's and really cool. Her to adjust the direction in which she wishes to launch them, dealing animo damage. Enemies launched by Gale Blade will remain clumped together when they fall, making follow-up attacks easier. Gale Blade is a very flexible ability. Strategic use of the surrounding terrain will often amplify its effects. Wind, hear me. Calling upon the wind's protection, Jean creates a dandelion field, knocking nearby enemies back and dealing animal damage. The field also quickly heals nearby allies and all party members. This healing scales with Jean's attack power. The dandelion field continuously heals characters within it, infusing them with anima, while dealing animo damage to enemies who enter or leave the field. Once right. the talent Let the Wind Lead is unlocked, using Dandelion Field will regenerate some additional elemental energy. Jean can help her team take charge, aid in their attacks, and do great damage through skillful use of her abilities. 
A well-rounded fighter indeed. Start the battle by using her elemental skill. Mop up nearby enemy groups and build elemental energy. Then use her charged attack to disrupt their movements, allowing your party members to switch in, attack, and deal damage. When your party members have taken significant damage, use her elemental burst at the opportune moment to repel enemies and regenerate your team's health before beginning the next Whoa, round of attacks. She's like a major healer on the team. Though Jean may lack experience, Mondstadt has only prospered since she assumed Varka's great responsibilities. Even I, who has seen countless people, must respect her desire to always defend Mondstadt. But unlike most who bear great burdens, this young knight has remained as tenacious as ever. How was her will molded, and what sustains her edge such that it never wears down? If fate wills it, I will find the answer to these questions. Jean, very, very, like, powerful character. And not in the means of, like, her abilities to fight, because she's powerful that way, too. But her overall, like, image and persona just seems like she's a very powerful character. Well-respected and very, very generous and kind at the same time. These trailers are doing these characters justice, like genuinely, they're explaining them very, very well. Not just what they can do in the game, but their overall character as well. I love that. That's amazing. And speaking of, I think we have another one. Uh, no, we have to do this one first. Uh, this is new character demo, Kekwing Yoyang of the Queen Quixing. Right. Let's have a watch. Electro, okay, she got electric. She sing. No, All right, she pronounced it a lot better than me. Let's go. Time is against us. We live in an era of change, as the old order that has existed for a thousand years is about to be rewritten. Join me. Let us bear witness to this historical moment together. All right, we're gonna get a a sneak peek of what she can do. And then we'll get an in-depth view of what she can do. With sword comes shadow. When your heart is set on something. All right, we've got an impa on the team. Kek Queen, Kek Queen, Kek Queen's awesome. Kek Queen's amazing. Let's have another look into Kek Queen. Star Wars sword. Star Wars sword. Is that a Zelda reference? Come on, dude. Alright, here we go. Everyone in Liyue knows it is Rex Lapis who protects their borders. But the city's daily affairs are run by the Qixing. Qixing. As Yuhong of the Qixing. Yuhong. Kuching acts decisively and pragmatically. <laughs> Kuching, Yuhon of the Qixing. Like the God, that's a mouthful. Yet as a representative of the mortals of Liyue, she has much to say about Rex Lapis's unilateral governance. We live in an era of change, as the old order that has existed for a thousand years is about to be rewritten. Within the Qixing, Kuching is one for action. Ruthless efficiency is her modus operandi. Like her personality, her sword work is both swift and uncompromising. This, along with her control of Electro, brings a shockingly abrupt end to any enemy. Kuching could not be more familiar with Liyue. Wow, she's Even fast. Even on long journeys, she always finds a swift route back home. If dispatched on an expedition in Liyue, she will complete it more quickly than most. So that's Kuching the map. can unleash a combo of up to five normal attacks. Her final wow, strike allows her really to cool. pass through enemies. Want her on my team. Yunlai swordsmanship is both offensive and defensive, offering a way to dodge some attacks and strike back from a better angle. Hold the attack button to consume stamina and release a two-slash flurry, dealing high physical damage. Tap Kuching's elemental skill Stellar Restoration to throw a lightning stiletto, which deals electro damage to enemies in a small area upon impact and leaves behind a lightning stiletto marker. 
Right. If Kuching uses stellar restoration again while the marker is still present, she flies to the marker and performs a quick slash, oh. dealing electro AoE damage. Holding stellar restoration allows Kuching to aim the lightning stiletto before releasing it. Adept use of the lightning stiletto produces various results. With the lightning stiletto, Kuching can oh, she can teleport attack from the best position. That is the so cool. The lightning can also be used in exploration to navigate exploration, yeah. terrain. Literally was going to say that it can be used for exploration. Also clear the lightning stiletto with a charged attack, causing a slashing thunderstorm that deals electro AOE damage at its location. Wow, she can teleport Death her attacks as well. That's insane. To creatively deal ranged damage. After unlocking the talent Thundering Penance, using Stellar Restoration while the Lightning Stiletto is present, converts Kuching's normal and charged attacks to electro damage for a short time. Cut to the chase! Kuching unleashes her electro power, causing electro AoE damage. Hiding behind the shadow of her sword, she relentlessly slashes surrounding enemies at lightning speed. Dealing that is bonkers. Of damage, with a final burst of electro AOE damage at the end. After unlocking the talent Aristocratic Dignity, casting Starward Sword increases Kuching's Star Wars and Sword. energy recharge for a period of time. I love how fast paced this character is. Light on her feet and leaving no shadow, Kuching is a sharp addition to any team. Groups of enemies or single opponents are no match for a well-executed combination of her skills. Kuchin cuts them all down with ease. The key to combat yeah, with Kuchin is super enjoy mastery of using the her character. Stiletto. First, use her elemental skill to place the stiletto. Then, use her elemental skill again to zip into battle and strike quickly. Follow up with more electro damage, using her elemental skill to suppress the enemy and continue to use the lightning stiletto at opportune moments to frequently move and attack. Keep up the offensive to rapidly accumulate energy. Once full, it is time to unleash Starward Sword and bring the fight to a perfect end. Wow. Human history is to be written by the people. Even without the protection of the gods, Li Yue would flourish as always. This is Kuching's belief. This desire to take fate into her own hands. I remember this feeling. Will she be able to bring her vision to life? To protect this land she calls home? In the hands of the Qixing, where is Li Yue headed? The road ahead is unclear, but we shall wait and see. Wow. This is where I'm going to be so torn, right? As far as I can see, you have a maximum of a party of three. So how do you decide your party when you have all these characters? Like, obviously it keeps things fresh. Like, if you're somebody that has used three characters, like, to the point where you couldn't actually get any better with them, you kind of have to switch it up and get new characters just to try them out and just kind of change the playstyle and just keep it fresh. Which is obviously really, really cool and something that I think is important for a game like this, especially one that's constantly being updated from what I can see. There seems to be a lot of stuff being added into this game. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed by it and the characters as well. Really, really impressed. Anyway, we're now on Genshin Impact Accolades trailer. Let's have a look at this, shall we? Okay, some really, really good reviews. One of the most exciting games I've played all year, says IGN. Well, don't know what... I mean, there's only so much you can take seriously from IGN. PlayStation Universe, one of the best surprises of the year. Okay. Unbridled charm and appeal. Definitely has charm and appeal, that's for sure. Pleasantly surprised by how good it looks and works on all platforms. Not all platforms. A surprisingly deep RPG. Okay. It says Game Rant.
with a massive gorgeous world and wildly satisfying combat. I really want to play this game. <laughs> I genuinely, like, really, really want to play this game. How the hell does this game work on mobile? Definitely doesn't look as good on the other platforms, I'd say. Anyway, we are more than halfway through our trailers, which is good. We're making some decent progress. Now we're on version 1.1. A new star approaches trailer. I guarantee you this one has got tons of views. 3.4. 3.4 million, that is. Right. Let's Boats see. Are made for transferring commodities back and forth. And those that come across Lior tend to stay a while. So it is where many things come to settle. This is the largest one we've seen so far. <gasps> the Fatui! They're attacking the Glacian Ballista! <laughs> what the hell is going on? Whoa, what the fuck? Once more. Farewell, old friend. These are proper cinematic trailers or shots. What the hell? I am the least adept with Tardigalia. Bow, and that is precisely why I must master Oh, all right. Okay, who's this guy? He's got a spear and a bow. Nothing can be accomplished with Zongli. He's got a spear too. Dionia and Zingyan? Whoa, who are these? More characters again? Like, how many characters are in this? Whoa. A new star approaches. Keeping it fresh. I like it. I like it. Another range of characters. Okay. There's another question I do have for all of the Genshin Impact enthusiasts out there. Is this game is a MMO RPG, isn't it? Like, you can come across other players in the game? Or am I wrong in saying that? Or is this actually just, just a full-blown RPG with some online aspects to it? I don't know. Like, I literally don't know very much about this game. I didn't really look into it. Um, mainly because it's something that I wanted to save for the channel. So, yeah, just let me know. Let me know. Let me know on Twitter and all that stuff, or even Instagram. It's up to you. Um, now we have another new character demo. This is Diona, or Diona, Wine Industry Slayer. Wine Industry Slayer. And she has something to do with, um, Diluke, maybe? She's, there's some sort of relation there. Diona. Bartender of the cat's tail. I charge a hefty fee for private events. Oh, she's a, a Neko. Here's a tailor, no prop, the real character. Proof of my cat's line bloodline. Life as a mixologist is very busy. When I'm she's not a mixologist. Cover, I'm out collecting ingredients for new recipes, so... So unless something is urgent, don't bother me. Very cute. A lot of adorable characters in this, which is nice. Is that like a mixer? I, I wasn't waiting for you. Yeah, it is. I just happened to be resting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these characters, dude, some of them are so random, but then when you get to know them more, it's like, oh, these characters are actually really, really cool. This is Childa Sigil of Permission. Character Tales. Let's check out this one. Okay, let's keep this Sir, let's keep this you going. Personally see it as such a routine matter. Relax. I have other matters to attend to as well. Who's this now? <laughs> Excellent. Even if one day we can't continue business here, we can make it far away with this. But Master, what about the debt? Oh yes, I'm here to collect that. <gasps> Who's there? Quick, guards! Protect the Master! 
No matter what it is you owe, you can't run from your debt. Is that not the law of the God of Contracts in Liyue? Fatui! You can't just barge into a private residence! Guards! Show him how we treat unwelcome guests at Yan Shang Tea House! <laughs> not much for adversaries. Uh oh, these well, guards are not gonna I stand a chance. Use a bit of exercise. And had a sigil of permission in their possession. It's been years since anyone has seen one of these. Your job is debt collection, yet you fail to check what treasures he possessed that you might collect. Apologies, a dereliction of my duty. Enough. Let's go. Yes, sir. All right, so somewhat of a villainous character, maybe? Hmm. But a villainous character that you may potentially be able to use? I don't know, lads. I don't know. All right, so this is chill day again, or child day, child chill day, kill day, chill day. Don't know how to pronounce it. A letter to Sneznea. Not gonna be able to remember any of these things, dude. There's just so much. Anyway, let's have a look. This is more in depth to his character, a little bit more, maybe, or what he's about. Dearest sister. Sister. I've okay, who's his sister? So I've almost forgotten the cold of our home. You know I grow restless when life is ordinary and boring. Though in Liyue, fuses of excitement can be found everywhere. Just waiting for the right spark. <laughs> Tardagalia. Come at me! All right, so it's definitely a character you can use. Not much of an adversary, but enough for a sideshow, I guess. Time to end this. Now's our chance. That's so. If you were smart, you wouldn't charge into unknown danger. It'll be an easy victory, but I still won't hold back. Your brother has just been taking care of some trivial matters here, really. But Tonya, rest assured. The future that Saritza desires, the future the people of Shnezhnaya desire, it Shnezhnaya. will be had. Okay, seems like a cool character. Not that impressed by him, because I've seen characters already that are way more impressive. But he's probably very good. Now we actually get a more in-depth look into his character. So let's have a look at this. The Fatui from Snezhnaya are known to make waves wherever Fatui they go in Tavat. From Snezhnaya. And Tartaglia is a driving force within them. Tartaglia. Of the eleven harbingers, ten concern themselves with clandestine operations. Tartaglia is the sole exception. Rather than lure his enemies into a trap, he prefers to face them head-on, in one-on-one -on -one combat. The wind is picking up. Tartaglia. There's conflict in the air. I'd probably just call him Taggy, to be honest. His reputation precedes him. Child is known far and wide as a fearsome warrior. Well-versed in a variety of fighting forms. So his he name Child or Tartaglia? And has two distinct modes of attack at his disposal. Taggy. When Tartaglia is in your party, all characters' normal attacks gain one level. Really? Dealing increased damage as a result. Ooh. Tartaglia okay. is weakest with a bow. So he chooses to use one the precisely spear. to overcome this weakness. His normal attack can combo up to six consecutive shots. Charging okay. the attack executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. Nice shot. While aiming, Hydro Whoa, Energy first we see that enemy. on the arrowhead. A fully charged arrow will deal hydro damage to enemies on impact, and also apply the Riptide status to them. When an enemy is affected by Riptide, further hits from Tartaglia's fully charged arrows deal multiple bouts of area of effect hydro damage. Okay. Also, when Tartaglia defeats an enemy affected by Riptide, it causes a Hydro Burst, 
which applies the Riptide status to nearby enemies. Unlocking the talent Never Ending extends the duration of Riptide. Faced with a strong foe, Tartaglia will reveal his true might. When he casts his elemental skill, he summons weaponry fashioned from There's pure hydro. There's his dual wielding thing, so it's like to water blades. The process, and also switches to his melee stance. In this stance, his normal attack now combos up oh, to six so consecutive turns... hydro slashes. Oh, cool! Charging the attack, so he can turn it into stamina, whatever weapon he wants, really. A two slash flurry, dealing hydro damage. In melee stance, when Tartaglia strikes an enemy affected by Riptide, he deals area of effect hydro damage. Tartaglia exits melee stance when his elemental skill is cast again, or after a certain time has elapsed. He then returns to his ranged stance, and his elemental skill enters cooldown. The longer Tartaglia spends in melee stance, the longer the cooldown time. After unlocking the talent Sword of Torrents, when in melee stance, if Tartaglia deals a critical hit, the Riptide status is applied to the enemy. Right. Depending on Tartaglia's stance, his elemental burst will unleash one of two different attacks. Riptide! In ranged stance, Tartaglia swiftly fires a hydro-imbued magic arrow ahead of him which deals area of effect hydro damage and also applies the riptide status to enemies. Afterwards, Tartaglia regains some of his spent energy. Shouldn't let your guard down. In melee stance, Tartaglia performs a slashing attack with a wide area of effect, dealing substantial hydro damage to all surrounding enemies. And if the elemental burst hits an enemy affected by riptide, the Riptide effect will be consumed in a Hydro Explosion, which deals area of effect Hydro damage. Tartaglia is a formidable warrior okay. who lives for the heat of battle. He chooses his moments to attack and retreat, and is tactical when selecting his mode of attack. This is what makes him so powerful. Faced with a single opponent, start by firing at them from a distance to apply the Riptide status. Then, enter melee stance and go in for the kill. Use fast and frequent attacks to trigger Riptide effects and deal immense damage. Nice! Against groups of enemies, build up energy in advance, and unleash an elemental burst in ranged stance to apply the Riptide status to, to the To all! Wow! And then you can deal then some serious amount stance. of damage. Now and I'm really the impressed. affected by Riptide, hacking away at their health, while also restoring Tartaglia's energy. Wait for an opportune moment to unleash another elemental burst and take them all out in one go, bringing okay. the battle Damn. to a clear-cut conclusion. I have to admit, I wasn't that impressed by him, but seeing that at the end... You know where Tartaglia acquired Ooh. his fighting skills before becoming a Harbinger. Nor do many know where his lust for combat originates. There is a dangerous secret to the martial legacy he inherits, but yeah. it is one that even he himself does not fully understand. Since becoming a Fatui Harbinger, fighting for the Tsaritsa is his new motivation as a warrior. Child is the Tsaritsa's weapon of war, and he stands for the might of Snezhnaya. An icy storm is starting to blow towards the other nations. Brace yourselves. Tevat is about to get cold. Taggy boy! Good old Taggy! Yeah, like, you know, from seeing all the other characters already in this, they were, like, really, really impressive, and they blew me away, and I was, like, super, like, impressed by the variety of each character. Um, but the him, for for me, didn't really deliver too much, but then until the end, when you can realize you can actually apply that kind of effect on all enemies, that was like, okay, that's kind of, like, really, really powerful, and really, really useful when it comes to trying to take out a lot of enemies at once. Um, but still not that impressive, because I feel like... The best has been shown. Now, could be wrong. I may get blown away by more characters in this. But, um, we'll just have to see. Right now, I was more impressed by the characters previous. So, yeah. So we're on a new character demo. This is another one again. So this is Zinyan. Oh yeah, rock on. Okay, so this is that, that, that female character that they only subtly introduced. 
And she's got pyro. And she's got a guitar! Okay, okay. She has the name and rock and roll the game! And I'm the only one who plays it in Leeway Harbor. Was not expecting that voice at all. What say you sign me up for your world tour? Anywhere's good. Almost about to go live over here. You coming? All right, let me let me see her rocking on. She better play that guitar. Oh, here we go! Yeah, getting some DMC three vibes from her there. Love it. Look out for my next performance. All right, so this this is what I'm talking about. Something fresh. Now that is fresh. Character playing a guitar. <laughs> you wouldn't expect that at all. Now, to be fair, we already got a bard. So we've got two two musicians now, which is cool. Um, now we have character tales, Zong Li, an additional expense. Right, let's have a look at this. This is me, fairy lady at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. No one of importance. This gentleman beside me is our most knowledgeable consultant, Mr. Zhang Li. This Noctilucus jade is small, but a beautiful shade of translucent blue. It would be a shame not to buy it. Alright, this is another one of those characters that was subtly introduced. Pasting a windwheel aster to wet glaze before it is fired in the water. Fascinating. The flower turns to ash, but its shape is forever retained. Such genius. It would be a pity to not purchase this. Yes, sir. Core lapis is itself hard to gather. It must have taken true skill indeed to unearth two pieces so alike. We should buy them. Yes, sir. A fine Noctilicus jade, artists in porcelain, and a pair of core lapis, and a wind wheel aster as a gift for the fairy lady. Yes, he even got me a gift. Mr. Zhang Li truly is an amazing person. When Shengling is cooking, it would be far more appealing to go to Wanmin restaurant as opposed to Sinue Kiosk or Lioli Pavilion. I'm fine with anything so long as it's good. So tiny. Wait, did they only have chopsticks? You will need to be adept with chopsticks if you are to truly appreciate Leo's gastronomy. Mr. Zhongli, we have Springvale boar on the menu today. Would you like to try it instead of the salt and pepper tofu? Oh yeah, we'll have both. In She's the chef. In Nai and Customs, we gave Xiang Ling a tip for her amazing new dish. Mr. Zhongli values friendly ties over Mora and is generous in word and deed. Well, the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor often foots the cost of his generosity. But thankfully, the Northland Bank is bearing this particular bill. Welcome, come in! Excluding this pair of hairpins, everything else is for sale. They're not for sale? Why not? These are heirlooms pawned by a poor fellow to scrounge together money for his wife's medication. I must hang on to them for him until the redemption period expires. Oh. I paid off the shopkeeper and took this pair of hairpins, seeking to return them to their owner with some living expenses on the side. Please help me to conceal these expenses in our accounts, would you? I will be sure to buy you lunch. <laughs> Honestly. Once you become entangled with Mr. Zhang Li, there's no getting away from him at all. Zhang Li. Zhang Li obviously is the gentleman of Genshin Impact. The very well educated, very intelligent, uh, very well respected, uh, very well off character. Um, like that about him. Like that about him. I really do. And seems to know what he wants. Very, very strong, powerful man. Um, but a well respected and well liked man at that. I think somebody that a lot of us men aspire to be like. Anyway, now we have Zhang Li, the listener. So we're going to get a lot of more in-depth into this character now going forward. So let's have a look at this. We have been recording for two hours now. We I knew this was going to be a long one. With ancient Liyue, beset by an ocean demon and a mountain dragon. Rex okay. Lapis mustered his a Depti hmm. to restore peace to the land. He's not they entertained. That before he set out, he spoke these words. 
Zhong Li, Vago Mundo, a mysterious expert contracted by couldn't read it all. This is an age of gods and monsters. I wish not for dominion. Yet I cannot watch the common folk suffer. Now this character is impressing the crap out of me. I love his style. He's unique from the other characters. I will have order. His character design is flawless. And what is this? Defend our safe harbor. That was the first contract in Leo. And now, the final contract, too, has been set in stone. Yep, Zhang Li all the way. Very, very cool character. Impressed. Didn't think I'd actually see another character that would impress me, but now I have to eat my words. That was really cool. Let's have a look at his collected miscellany. Let's have a look at this. This is going to be going in-depth with him now. Oh, so let's see what he can do, what kind of abilities he has. When it comes to Liu is sacred traditions. Did they specify his elemental? The divinity is in the details. Even the most fastidious of academics don't claim to know them all. And yet, the mysterious funeral consultant Zhong Li seems he's to know them like the back of his hand. He's a funeral consultant. I was not expecting the that. The ancient rite of parting is a most unique tradition. Many details have been lost over time. But Zhong Li is still able to perform the rite to perfection. Though he looks young, Zhong Li knows each ancient tradition inside out. But his own past is shrouded in mystery. So he's mysterious as well. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Zhong Li excels Geo. in manipulating Geo. Able to create and absorb geo matter, and provide sturdy shields for his allies. This, paired with his exceptional ability in combat, makes him a reliable member of your party. Zhong Li seems to know everything about everything, even a simple chunk of white iron ore. He is able to pick out the best ore and use it to maximum effectiveness. When forging pole arms, Zhong Li recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Zhang Li's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Wow, I'm liking the, the areas that they're showing here with Zhang Li. And lunge forward, casting down stone spears across Zhang Li's path, dealing significant physical damage to enemies. Tap Zhang Li's elemental skill to summon the geo energy from within the ground, and form a stone steel, dealing that area is of effect so badass. damage to enemies. So While elegant. The stone seal remains. It will periodically perfect. resonate with nearby geo constructs, dealing continuous geo damage to surrounding enemies. You can take advantage of this in battle. Draw enemies affected by other elements towards the stone steel. What? To both deal geo damage and cause crystallize reactions. Use the elemental shield created by crystallize to help your party survive. Stone steels oh, can also be used so it to block them enemy to it. attacks, or climbed to traverse difficult terrain. Holding Zhong Li's elemental skill causes geo energy around him to explode, creating a jade shield and dealing area of effect geo damage. The jade shield absorbs damage. The amount absorbed scales with Zhong Li's max HP and is higher against enemies' geo attacks. What? If Zhong Li is surrounded by targets affected by Geo, dude just seems a like like a really powerful character, like really powerful. This effect does not deal damage, but can effectively break down enemies' Geo armor and nearby ore deposits. Whoa! After unlocking the talent Resonant Waves, when the Jade Shield takes damage, it will fortify your character, allowing their shield to absorb more damage. 
This is order. Zhongli can bring a huge meteor crashing down, dealing massive geo damage what? and applying petrification. Dude's got meteor. The impact site. Petrified enemies become immobilized. After unlocking the talent Dominance of Earth, Planet Befall deals additional damage to enemies, which scales with Zhongli's max HP. Zhongli maintains his composure Jesus. even as he meets out punishment in battle. His exceptional ability to provide support and deal damage makes him quite prepared for any scenario. As the fight begins, first use Zhongli's elemental skill to summon a stone steel and draw enemies near it, creating the ideal environment for dealing damage. Next, create a jade shield to absorb incoming damage. Then, alternate normal and charged attacks, stringing together attacks to deal enormous wow. damage. When energy is full, I love that. That is elemental burst and badass. Party's attacks to wipe out the enemy. While Liyue Harbor grows restless on the eve of disaster, as the host of the rite of parting, Zhong Li still calmly goes about his work. The world around him may be descending into chaos, yet he remains unperturbed, sipping his tea and watching a good show. Quite the fascinating character. As Li Yue faces the turbulence of change, does he believe it is none of his business? Or is he also a player in this game, acting behind the scenes? It may be some time before the answers finally emerge. But no matter, for time is not something I lack. Zhong Li. I gotta applaud Zhong Li's character. Very, very impressive. Probably one of the most impressive characters let alone being Im impressed by another character in this in this game probably one of the most impressive characters i've seen so far that is saying something like that is that is awesome i really like zhang li's character and it's definitely somebody that i would use quite heavily in this game version 1.2 the chalk prince and the dragon trailer oh okay so we have about 10 or 11 trailers left to check out lads so we're getting there we're getting there Do you know the story of Durin and this mountain? Snow gathers atop this mountain and never melts, which is a most curious phenomenon. In fact, I believe that the very sword in your hand has Durin's remains in it. As such, who could I find to help me if not you? Into position! Prepare for battle! Getting a little cold? Whoa, who's that? Genius, but I don't I'll think I'm a genius. Moment of birth. My job is to honor my contract with Can my you? All hail. Right, so more characters. Geez, I knew there was a lot of characters in this, but goddamn. to de-stress. I made a new discovery while sketching nearby. There's an area up ahead that's quite remarkable. The truth of this world. What could it be? Alright, so we're getting a little bit of an idea of what these new characters... Oh, we've seen her already. She's a rock star. So that's Albedo. And we're actually getting a look at different areas in the game. Like, this is an icy, snowy area. really a good thing. The Chalk Prince and the Dragon. Right, so is he the Chalk Prince? Albedo. So these these are obviously like 
like these trailers that we're checking out now are additions to the game which essentially any trailer that we watch here are more additions to the game um unless it's the earlier stuff that we've seen already which is basically the game um so now this is the character teaser albedo still life and creation so let's have a look at this new character again another new character see what this this dude is all about this is a guy i, I think alchemy is a mysterious yeah, art is. that revolves around all living things and the study of life in particular requires painting yes you certainly make wonderful paintings i don't know who she is your interest, Mr. Okay. Albedo. another new character again arise lifeless dust of the universe and that within thou art reborn do you understand now sucrose Simply amazing, Mr. Albedo. Next, I will paint the common visha. I find the carapace to be its most enjoyable feature. The intricate patterns, and even its sheen. But the rest of the visha is quite ordinary, and requires but a few quick brush strokes. Voila! Arise, oh, lifeless I dust. Of... So, you eat while you can make paintings come alive? Excuse me, Mr. Albedo. But I fear creating such creatures may sit outside the sphere of acceptability within our roles as alchemists. Oh, is that so? <sighs> Just like always, overly passionate about what piques your interest, yet completely indifferent towards anything otherwise. Your swing and interest this time didn't even leave you long enough to finish your painting. Oh, what's that mean? Is it gonna come alive? Oh, what did he make? Oh, what? So, Albedo is actually able to conjure whatever he paints? That is, um, kind of scary. <laughs> Alright, so now we have Albedo, uh, Contemplation in Chalk. This is our character demo of Albedo. This is Timaeus' newest design? Hmm. A commendable achievement. Twenty more years. And perhaps we can let him make a start on the textbook Sucrose uses today. Whoa. Albedo. Fred Prince, a genius known. Damn it, I can't read all that. Right. Very well put together trailer. All. I like the music that goes with this. This is nice. Ah, it's Klee! The killer lolly that's extremely explosive. of the starry void earth the accumulative memory of time and being this is a very unique trailer damn little Sorry. trailer like this yeah the origin of alchemy the basis of all life shock the substance from which primal life is molded That beat, though. I really like it. Klee? No, not at the... <laughs> I love Klee. I love Klee. Oh, Okay, so he seems really interesting. Uh, still need to be, you know, impressed, but we'll see. We'll know now with the collected uh, miscellany. So let's have a look at this and see what this character actually has in store for the game and what it can actually bring. The city of Pastorals, Mondstadt, is as free as the wind. Even an outsider like Albedo can become chief alchemist of the Knights of Favonius. But on the other hand, his mastery of alchemy means that no one ever would have taken much persuading. Mondstadt was never a nation known for its alchemy, but since Albedo's arrival, the knight's achievements in the field 
sit only behind those of Sumeru's top scholars. Knights and academics. Not two words that one would expect to hear in the same sentence. Okay. Geo as well. So Geo is like Instead its own of unique the charge kind of thing. In combat, the calm and collected Albedo is better suited to providing support with reliable I love that Klee is like the support character here. Still, his skill set allows him to deal powerful attacks, meaning he more than holds his own on the battlefield. Creation is the basis of alchemy. Albedo's knowledge allows him to find ways to improve crafting recipes and make better use of materials. When crafting weapon ascension materials, he has a chance of doubling the crafting output. Albedo's normal attack can combo up to five strikes with his sword. Holding the attack button consumes a certain amount of stamina and performs two swift forward slashes. Tap his elemental skill to create a solar isotoma using alchemy, dealing area of effect geo damage. A field is created around the solar isotoma. Periodically, when an enemy within the field takes damage, a transient blossom is generated at the enemy's location. Okay. The transient blossom scales off Albedo's defense, dealing AoE geo damage to surrounding enemies. A transient right. blossom can only be generated once every two seconds. Additionally, making contact with the solar wow. isotoma causes geoenergy to accumulate, forming a crystallized Ooh. platform that lifts the character up to a certain height. Only one platform can exist at a time. Okay. Strategic use of the crystallized platform lets you employ plunge. Oh, so all characters can use and it. Helps you deal yeah, that's with really cool. Up above. Look at Kligo. Hold Albedo's elemental skill to choose the solar isotoma's position and use the crystallized platform to get past environmental oh. obstacles more quickly. Okay. After unlocking the talent Calcite Might, transient blossoms deal extra damage against enemies with low health. Okay. What was that? Crystallized geo energy bursts forth at Albedo's command, dealing AoE geo damage in front of Albedo. If Albedo's solar isotoma is still present on the battlefield, seven fatal blossoms are generated in the solar isotoma field, which bloom aggressively, dealing AoE geo damage. After unlocking the talent Homuncular Nature, Albedo's elemental burst increases nearby party members' elemental mastery for a period of time. Oh wait, hang on. That's showing two different players playing together. Albedo's skill set okay. is a rare and invaluable asset in combat. Creative use of the solar isotoma greatly diversifies the battle, paving the party's way to certain victory. When the battle begins, create a solar isotoma with Albedo's elemental skill. As he and fellow party members attack enemies inside the solar isotoma field, transient blossoms appear and deal damage to enemies, while generating crystalline shields through elemental reactions. Solar isotoma also enables party members to unleash plunging attacks. When energy is full, have Albedo unleash an elemental burst, giving the whole party a performance boost with increased elemental mastery. Okay. Interesting. No one can dispute Albedo's talent, but the source of the knowledge he possesses, it once brought about the destruction of a glorious nation. All that most people know of him is his title, Crida Prince, and that he gained his position in the Knights on recommendation from Alice the Adventurer. Beyond this, the young man is a stranger to them, a complete mystery, and the essence of his knowledge is equally unknown. But I know it well. Seems to be a pattern it with a lot of these characters. Kandria, There's a the lot of, of mystery Kandria, and unknown about soil them. Soil and chalk, the universe and earth, pure dust and the birth of human life. There is no mistaking it. I am content to watch most crises play out from the sidelines, but if Albeda were ever to make a single wrong move, I could not let myself ignore it. So, the narrator, who, who, what character is the narrator? He's obviously got some sort of like relation with some of these characters when he talks about them. 
And he knows so much as well, which is really interesting. Anyway, that was another new character. Was I impressed? I was a little bit, but not like to the point where I'm like, oh yeah, definitely gonna have Albedo on my team, you know. Um, Zhang Li, on the other hand, was definitely a character that I'm like really impressed by. So that was the first newer character that was introduced that I was impressed with. So far, eh, gonna take a little bit more than that to impress me, I think. Anyway, so now we're on Ganyu. This is another new character. So let's see if this character will impress me. A knight in Liu Harbor. Let's have a look at this. The night scenes of Liu. The lantern light of centuries. Only I know that this rising star has come far in the millennium past. Only okay, very I remember. Pretty. The hours at which dew forms on the glazed lilies and disappears again. 106,327 heartbeats. The time that has passed since I last knew rest. Packing up the stalls. Closing up the pavilions. One can almost hear the street lights going out. It is as it is night after night. Ever so distant from me. The night of Leia. Over. Now that you know the secrets of the night, would you accompany me to work overtime? No way! <laughs> no! Who would want to work overtime? Alright, so impressions from the character seems to be very, like, analytical and um, passionate. So, let's see more about her, shall we? Character Demo, Radiant Dreams. Let's have a look at this. We are actually getting very close to the end now. We have officially watched everything Genshin Impact has to offer. Which is actually really, really awesome because after this experience, I'm genuinely, like, really interested in playing this game. And I'm also kind of invested already, which is actually, I want to say surprising. I wasn't expecting it. sugar content looks like a lemon food, it's not the healthiest option but feasting probably delish on it works wonders for my mood <laughs> so, right let's see what she can do permit you to trample these flowers all right let's see what she can do then all right she has a bow as well a lot of archers I've noticed Born of ice and frost. not as many swordsmen as I'd like but still Alright, so she can do cryo. Wait, she was dreaming all that scenario? Please don't touch my horns. I never even noticed the horns until now. Don't sleep by oh, it's the zombie! Huh? So I was asleep? It was just a dream. All hail! Alright. So I'm guessing this part is not a dream. Very sweet character. Nothing like new to add to the table, I don't think. Is there more to this trailer? Oh, there is. Why is she falling? Is she a workaholic or something? Does she have that condition where. Oh shit, I'm after clicking some. That, you know, that condition where you just randomly fall asleep? Oh, go away, YouTuber. Um, What's that called? It's called. Um, there's a technical term for somebody that falls asleep spontaneously. Forget. Somebody in the chat. Somebody in the comment section. Please. That'd be great. Anyway. Now we're about to see the collected miscellany of Ganyu. So this is going to be more in-depth. So let's see. Let's see what Ganyu has to offer as a character. Right now, not that impressed because... I haven't really seen anything new. Given Liyue's present prosperity, it's only natural that the city's operational support should match its scale. For millennia, from the birth of the Liyue Qixing to its current roster of seven, they've all relied on the Yuehai Pavilion's secretary, the half Chilin illuminated beast Ganyu, who assists the mortals in handling the most crucial matters. Although I detest deities, 
and have no liking for the Adepti who sign contracts with the Geo Archon. A person like Ganyu is still deserving of my respect. My job is to honor my contract with Rex Lapis by looking out for the interests of all living things in Leo. It is said okay. that when a Chilin is brought to fight, the sun will lose its light. Ganyu is a force to be reckoned with, an archer with an exceptional aptitude for aimed shots. So when you her mastery over when you summon her on the team well to high damage burst attacks. The weather becomes While shit. Skills are of great help to her and her allies during combat. Oh my god, it does! Through centuries of training, so every time I use her, it rains? Oh, it's not raining now. Perfection. She excels at not only using bows, but also making them. Though she no longer needs to fight on the front lines, she still knows bow and arrow like the back of her hand. While forging bow-type weapons, Ganyu recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Her normal attack can combo up to six consecutive shots, dealing physical damage to enemies. Okay. Charging the attack executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. Based on its charge time, the shot generates different effects. Charge level one fires off an icy arrow that deals cryo damage. Right. Charge level two? Charge level 2 fires off a frost flake arrow that deals cryo damage and blooms after hitting its target, dealing AoE cryo damage. Okay, and is there a level 3? Frost flake arrow's power is best used against distant groups of enemies to maximize its effect. Okay, looks like there's only 2. After unlocking the talent Undivided Heart, within a set period of time after shooting a Frost Flake arrow, the next Frost Flake arrow and its bloom will receive a crit rate bonus. Tap oh. Ganyu's elemental skill to dash backward, leaving an Ice Lotus in her place that deals cryo damage and continuously taunts surrounding enemies, attracting them to attack it. Ah, okay, distracts them. When destroyed or once its duration ends, it blooms profusely dealing oh. AoE cryo damage. Ice Lotus's endurance scales based on Ganyu's max HP. Dexterous use of Ice Lotus can effectively redirect enemy fire, creating a safe environment for Ganyu to dish out damage. Blaze over! Ganyu coalesces atmospheric frost to summon a sacred cryo pearl. While it's active, the sacred cryo pearl will continuously rain down shards of ice upon enemies That's within a set really area, cool. dealing cryo damage. Celestial shower deals damage while serving as a reliable source of cryo that allows Ganyu's allies to trigger corresponding elemental reactions and further increase their damage output. After unlocking the talent Harmony Between Heaven and Earth, with Ganyu and your party, all active party members within Celestial Shower's AoE gain a cryo damage bonus. As an archer, Ganyu knows to keep her enemies at a safe distance and avoid close quarters combat. A constant barrage of Frostflake arrows is what makes her strengths truly shine, leading her to victory. Ganyu can use her elemental skill to get out of harm's way and taunt her opponents, allowing her to then fire Frostflake arrows unbothered, dealing damage to groups of enemies from afar. When her energy is full, Ganyu can unleash her elemental burst to further increase her ability to deal damage. When facing more formidable foes together with her allies, Ganyu's ability to taunt and infuse enemies with cryo is an effective form of support for the whole party. Whoa! Allows for defeating enemies in one fell swoop. The Liyue Qixing has changed over generations. Centuries have passed in the blink of an eye. Ganyu's accompanied Liyue through many a storm, but Liyue Harbor itself, can this city really become a safe harbor for an adeptus in the world of mortals. When the Geo Archon Morax was alive, an adeptus like Ganyu could find a sense of belonging in the human city. But at present, when the rite of parting has already marked his end, the loneliness of an inhuman living in the human world, will it take Ganyu over completely? I always look forward to the end of those kind of trailers because it gives you a little bit more 
um, added context to the characters. Ganyu is is cool. Like she is cool. She's a really likable looking character and stuff. But I can't. I like like every character that we've seen so far. Like has impressed me in their own individual way, and they all seem to have something different to offer. But it feels like now they're getting to that point where they're like, right. So what? Something new can we do? Or something new that we can introduce that, you know, doesn't feel like the same. But they can't help themselves but use things that we've already kind of seen. Like, these characters, they're cool and all. The only one I've seen that was, like, unique to himself so far was Zhang Li. When I see these other characters introduced, I'm like, okay, but we've already got characters kind of similar to these characters. So it's very difficult now to find the uniqueness in them. Um, now, then again, I could be, completely, could be completely wrong. Like, using these characters may actually potentially have, like, some seriously good uses. But I guess we'll have to see. Um, we're actually getting into some really good stuff now. We're on version 1.3. We're on our final 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 trailers. So, this is going to be good. I'm excited. Or is it? Yeah, 5 trailers. This is version 1.3, all the glitters trailer. Is this going to give us more characters again? I feel like every time we get these new version updates to the game... It's just introducing a bunch of new characters. Wow, such a beautiful lantern. How is it made? Wow, so many stalls. That is awesome. Love that. All that glitters. Come, try your hand at Theater Mechanicus. New areas there to explore? Seems to be something mysterious about this photographic apparatus. If you're able to, <clears throat> could you try to convince Xiao to go with you? Zhao. Alright. Another new character. I think we've seen this character already, but we haven't seen what Zhao can do. He wears a mask. Alright. Okay. Okay. Hang on now. Wait, who's that? Oh, I know who she is. We've seen her already. She's the chef. I think we've seen her, I think. Alright. Show me more of Zhao, please. Oh, hang on, it's not over. Paimon will help you find her, and we'll spend the next lantern right together. So is the majority of the story of him trying to find his sister? Like, that's one thing that I haven't seen really highlighted in this, is the actual overall story of the game. I'm sure it has one. Okay. Very, very cool. Nothing really else to see in the trailer. Right, so there's more characters again. Okay. So now we're on character teaser. This is Hu Tao. Scared yet. Another new character. I want to see more Zhao, to be honest. Right, so we got some sort of mystical kind of character. Right. <laughs> Give you a fright. Or it's just kind of a spooky themed character. In the middle of the night. This place isn't as safe as you believe me. Come with me. I'm Hu Tao, Wangsheng Funeral Parlor Director. Let me help you cross over. Funeral director. All right. Yeah. Help you cross over the hill, not cross into the afterlife. Huh? And why are the butterflies our guides? Well. 
Because they want to be sealies when they grow up. <laughs> Though that walking encyclopedia Zhongli would no doubt have a completely different explanation. So she's obviously somebody that knows Zhongli because okay. we're in the same you should be safe line of here. business. Next time, don't go running around in dangerous places. Of course, if you really insist on adventuring, then be my guest. Adventurers are our VIP clients after all. We even have coupons for you. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I'm oh, very interested by this character. Travel buddy? We're having a sale. Second client, half price. Okay. <laughs> all right. Interested? Yes. Definitely, definitely interested. We're going to see no more about her now in the character demo. I like this character, that, that the character has their own, like, kind of theme, her spooky Halloween-y type theme. Makes me like the character. Hey, uh, oh? you sure we're going the right way? Doubt there's any treasure in this creepy place. <sighs> this treasure map. Uh oh, ours. something's gonna happen with Isu. She's gonna spook him. Hey, wait. Did you just hear something? <sighs> Man, up. you're just imagining things. I like the theme song. All right. Now this is this is something new. I like this. I love the trailer as well. Order of duality, impermanence of fate. I raise this butterfly to guide thee. Ah, yeah, so many droll people. Fatui, not even worth the tea. Guess I'll need to send you off myself. All right, so she's Pyro. <laughs> Zombie, are you scared? <laughs> yes, you, you have to have those two characters together. I love the theme song. That is brilliant. Yes, fair play to the devs. Really, really good addition. I was looking for something fresh, I just got it. Ha! <laughs> Let's go! Alright, so now we're actually going to know a lot more about her in the collected miscellany of her character. So let's have a look at this! The people of Liyue value tradition, and their traditions are embodied in all manner of rites. Of these, the rites that mark life's end are of utmost importance. Liyue's funeral rites are complex, and only Wangsheng Funeral Parlor can conduct them Wang to Sheng the satisfaction funeral parlor. of all. Wangsheng has stood for 77 generations and has gained still greater fame in recent years. 77? Thanks to their eccentric young director, Hu Tao. When the sun's Ooh, out, bathe Love in her name sunlight. as well. Love but her name. When the moon's out, bathe in moonlight. Hu Tao manipulates Pyro with ease and can sacrifice her HP to increase her damage output, cleansing the world of impurities with an unrelenting flame. When Hu Tao cooks a dish perfectly, she has a chance to obtain a suspicious dish of the same kind. Hu Tao's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Okay. Hu Tao's charged attack consumes a set amount of stamina to lunge forward, dealing physical damage to enemies in her path. She's adorable as well, isn't Hu Tao she? also has a unique effect when sprinting, allowing her to briefly disappear Whoa. and pass through certain Whoa, small foes. Whoa! She can pass through them! And she sets him on fire! Hu Tao consumes part of her HP to cast her elemental skill, knocking nearby enemies back and entering the Paramita Papilio state. This converts her attack damage to pyro damage, which cannot be overridden by another elemental infusion. Her resistance to interruption is also increased, and she receives an attack increase based on her max HP when entering this state. Wow. Okay. Paramita Papilio ends after a set duration, or when Hu Tao leaves the field. After okay. unlocking the talent Flutterby, 
Ending Paramita Papilio increases the crit rate of all of Hu Tao's party members, other than herself, for a set duration. Okay. Moreover, while Paramita Papilio is in effect, Hu Tao's charged attacks apply the Blood Blossom effect to enemies it hits. Which does what? Enemies affected by Blood Blossom will take pyro damage at set intervals. Oh, right. This effect so it gradually expires after a while. Takes damage only off. Only one off. Blood Blossom can exist on any one target at a time. Okay. And only Hu Tao can refresh its duration. Wang Sheng has a long heritage. It's said that their directors passed down a secret technique to traverse between life and death. Unafraid in the face of death, they instead unleash yet greater power. Once the talent Sanguine Rouge is unlocked, Hu Tao gains a pyro damage bonus when her HP is low. Pyre, pyre, pants on fire! <laughs> Hu Tao commands a blazing spirit to deal pyro damage in a I like the blazing AOE. spirit. When her elemental burst hits enemies, Hu Tao regenerates a certain percentage of her max HP. A maximum of five enemies can affect this percentage. Additionally, using this skill when Hu Tao's HP is low, deals greater damage and regenerates more HP. Oh, wow, okay. That's really useful. Hu Tao's unique fighting style often imperils her. As such, she must coordinate with her teammates and choose the right moment to use her skills and manage her HP. Hu Tao often begins by using her elemental skill to enter the Paramita Papilio state. Yeah. Then she alternates it's a great way to get the advantage straight away to deal pyro damage, applying blood blossoms onto enemies. Very, very cool, like this. She then leaves the field, using the crit rate increase from Flutterby to increase her teammates' damage output. When Hu Tao's HP is low, she can choose a group of enemies upon which to unleash her elemental burst, dealing pyro damage and regenerating her HP. Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor conducts rites of utmost solemnity, and its staff are used to speaking little, making Hu Tao's liveliness seem an ill fit. Her elders once criticized her mischief making, but having seen her immaculate conduct of the parlor's affairs, they could do naught but admit their error. Life Fair and enough. death are but two halves of an endless cycle. Life leads unto death, and death unto new life. Why then should death be taboo? Hu Tao has had the wisdom to see this, though some of her elders have yet to do so. Wow, oh, okay, Hu Tao! Coming in there with another interesting character. Fair play to the devs on that one. Fair play. Right, lads. We're on our last trailer. This is it. Version 1.4. The newest version of the game. Invitation of Windbloom trailer. Let's have a look. I hope you all enjoyed the ride. Make sure you leave a like. I decided to stay for the whole thing. And this is going to be one super long chunky video for you guys to sit back and relax and enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Here it is. Our final trailer of the day. Let's check it out. Probably more characters going to be introduced into the world of Genshin Impact. Let's see. So, Traveler, the Mondstadt Windbloom Festival. Do you like it? Super impressed visually by this game. Super impressed. Come on, put your skills to the test. One thing I noticed is that the characters don't run very fast. Come enjoy the Windbloom Festival. Alright, so like there's loads of mini games that you can play at the festival. Wow, look how high up! Jeez! Oh, look! It's a musical game. Go adventure with you? Just like we do if I was on your adventure team? Who's that? And who's that? My chivalric training? More characters, bro. I'm feeling quite uncomfortable. I well, we so haven't seen better. him yet. Well, it's a little embarrassing.
embarrassing to say, but... Uh, look out! Oh, no. There's Amber. Unofficial business? How's the research going? <laughs> By Luke. Invitation of Windblue. Don't overdo it. Let me take care of it. Wait, who's this now? I hear you've got a job for Rosaria. Me. You can't run. Like My god, there is so much to this game. What's that? Who's that? This looks like an intense boss. Sick trailer. Whoa, where is he now? Invitation of Windbloom. Festival challenges peculiar wonderland. Festive anecdotes. Anecdotes, sorry. Anecdotes. Wishful drops. Right. Contending tides. Alrighty. Hang out with events. To get rich rewards. Marvelous merchandise. Right. Okay. We did it. We watched all 53 trailers. Literally everything Genshin Impact has to offer. We reacted to today. All right, lads, ladies, there you have it. We did it. We finally did it. Genuinely, I'm extremely impressed by this franchise. Um, there's so much that I have missed, obviously, because this game did come out last year. Um, and to be honest, I think when it first came out, there wasn't a whole lot about the game. There wasn't that many people talking about it. But as, you know, these updates came out and as the game progressed, it seems like more and more people are talking about this game. Now... At first, I was very impressed by this game when it first showed the announcement trailer way back. Um, but then when I heard about microtransactions and stuff like that and what this game was, you know, what it was consisting of, I just genuinely just kind of lost interest and I didn't want to, you know, explore it. But now, after like really delving into these trailers and seeing what genuinely is in store for me to play this game, like, I really, really want to now. Like, I really, really want to. And I think if you guys noticed, as I progressed through the trailers, I stopped talking and comparing this to Breath of the Wild because it eventually became its own thing. Now, there is a lot of inspiration taken from Breath of the Wild and you can't really deny that. But overall, it is its own thing and it has so much to offer. Almost too much, <laughs> in my opinion. I think there's way too many characters. I genuinely think there's way too many characters. But as I've said before in this video, that it's daunting to me because... It's all at once. I think if you're somebody that has been casually playing this game from the beginning and you're gradually being introduced to these new characters, it's just constantly refreshing. I mean, it's like any other game that you play online with friends like Apex Legends or League of Legends. Like there's always going to be new characters introduced um, to keep the game fresh and keep something new at being added into the game and to the franchise. So Overall, really impressed by it. The one thing that I do want to say about it that I didn't really fully get from these trailers was overall story. Now, this is one of those things that I have been a little bit worried about when it comes to this game was the overall story. Like, what is it? I got a little bit of something with two siblings that are apparently royalty. One is looking for the other. They all have their own story. And that every single character that we were introduced as well also has their own story and purpose in the world. But I didn't get a huge story that includes everybody and I don't think there is one maybe there is maybe there is or maybe it's just one of those games where you have to really dive deep into the lore to get the full aspect of the story which is a bit of a shame because I feel like with a world so beautiful with a lot of unique and different characters that you could really make a luscious and fulfilling rich story 
And I just didn't get that from the trailers. Now, that could just be the trailers and the game itself actually introduce you to story. But I don't know. Like I said, I've never played this game and I have a lot to learn. So lads, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, this was a super long one, almost three hours of a recording. Um, more than likely the video won't be three hours, but it'll be close to it, as I'll probably cut out very little. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope this was fun. I hope this was enjoyable and entertaining. Um, if it was, please leave a like. I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you're new. And of course, if you want to be a part of the live stream experience, where we more than likely, depending on how well we do here with this video and how much interest there is, we'll do a live stream where I'll play the game for the first time. Now, it's not going to be like a continuous live stream. Um, depending on the popularity of it, we'll see. And obviously, if I really like the game, I, could keep, I can stream it now and again anyway. But if you want to be a part of that, you know where to go. Twitch.tv slash dbeek. Link in the description below. And as I said at the start of this video, make sure you follow me on Twitter if you have anything to say to me regarding Genshin Impact or any knowledge that you want to share as well. Anyway, lads, that is it. I am done for today when it comes to recording. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And as always, stay geeky, stay cool, be awesome, and be happy. And I'll see you dudes in my next Genshin Impact video. See you later, dudes.